Have you ever wondered why it takes so long for metal to rust? And why other reactions like say burning of gasoline are so fast? In our study of chemistry, we haven't yet thought about how fast or how slow chemical reactions go, but some run really, really, really slowly like rusting metal and some run really quickly like burning gasoline. So in this lesson, we'll start to think about reaction rates and all the different things that determine how fast a reaction runs. In this lesson, we're going to compare two fast chemical reactions to begin to understand reaction rate. We'll introduce collision theory as the key to understanding how fast reaction runs, and we'll discuss the factors that impact reaction rate. All right, first, let's compare two chemical reactions. The first one we'll think about is gasoline burning. So this metal pan here is full of gasoline, which we can represent as C8H18, and it's combining with oxygen and producing CO2 and water. So that chemical reaction is pretty fast. It burns, releasing tons of heat. But have you ever wondered why gasoline doesn't explode under most circumstances? Maybe in the movies. But typically, gasoline doesn't explode, it just burns. It releases energy, but not that fast. Well, why is that? If we can understand reaction rates, we can understand why gasoline merely burns, but something like TNT explodes. So here is a picture of TNT exploding. It's an even faster chemical reaction than gasoline burning. And it's such a fast chemical reaction that its energy is released all at once. And that's why we see this violent explosion releasing these dust particles all over the place. Now, we won't go over the reaction for TNT exploding in detail, but what I do want to highlight right away is just there's actually only one reactant, and that's going to be really important. And we'll come back to that at the end of the lesson to help you understand why TNT explodes while gasoline merely burns. All right? Now, if we want to understand reaction rates, we have to understand what's called collision theory. It sounds fancy, but basically it just means that chemical reactions require collisions to go forward, in most cases. Not every single case, but in nearly all case, we have to have molecules colliding to run a chemical reaction. Let's, for example, pretend that these green spheres represent gasoline, which is C8H18, and that the blue spheres represent oxygen, which is our O2. Well, if I wanna go ahead and grab that carbon and put oxygens on it to make CO2, right here, or the hydrogens to put oxygen on it and make water right there, they have to run into each other. And that's what this shows right here, an oxygen molecule colliding with a gasoline molecule. And when that happens, you get the chance for a reaction. Not every collision results in a reaction. They have to have the correct orientation. They have to be angled the right way with respect to each other and run into each other with enough energy. But the point is, is that collisions are important for our reaction to go forward. And with that in mind, we'll talk about these four factors that impact reaction rate. Okay, the first one is temperature. We'll see that higher temperatures lead to a faster reaction rate. Then concentration, how much of that stuff is around. Turns out more of it being around leads to a faster reaction. Then our nature of reactants. That's kind of a strange one that has a lot of components to it, but we'll go through two examples there. The number of reactants and also the phase of the reactants. Catalyst will actually leave till our next lesson. So we're just going to be covering these three for the remainder of our lesson. Okay, first let's think about temperature. Well, temperature, if we increase it, increases reaction rate. So that's the main take home point. Increasing temperature increases reaction rate. Why is that? Well, remember that our reactions depend on collisions. So over here under the low temperature conditions, we see this one collision right here. But once we increase temperature, those molecules bounce around way faster, giving us more and more chances for a collision. So here we see a one collision, two collision, three collisions. We've tripled the number of collisions in this case by increasing the temperature. So when we increase the temperature, we make reactions run faster by increasing how often we have collisions and turns out also how high of energy those collisions are. So temperature increases reaction rate. What about concentration? Well, concentration, for very similar reason, increases reaction rate. So take home point, increasing concentration increases reaction rate. Why is that? Once again, has to do with collisions. Here we have just one, two, three of our blue spheres, and also three of our green spheres. On the right-hand side, we have one, two, three, four blue spheres. So we've just increased how many of our reactants are around. What that does is once again increases the chances of a collision. So you'll notice in the low concentration case, we have one collision, whereas in the high concentration, we have one, two, three of these different collisions. All right, so increasing the concentration increases the number of collisions and makes our reaction run faster. 
Okay, the last thing we'll talk about with respect to reaction rate is the nature of reactants. First, let's think about phase. Specifically, we'll go back to our gasoline example. Remember, gasoline just burns. If I think more carefully about what's going on, remember that it's the air around us. It's the air that has our oxygen in it. All right, gasoline down here is a liquid. So we have a liquid interacting with air. Now, where could those collisions happen? Well, it turns out there's only one very special place it can happen, right here at the interface between the air and the liquid is where our chemical reaction can occur. So occasionally, an air molecule, oxygen in this case, will come down and collide with the liquid. And that might bring forward a reaction. This is one reason that gasoline burns kind of slowly. It's because there's not a good mixture of oxygen and gasoline. They have to interact just at this one narrow point, the interface. Meanwhile, TNT, because it has just one reactant, because it has just one reactant, doesn't rely on these collisions. So here we see the stick of TNT. We could imagine a fuse going in the top. And the whole thing is this molecule. All right, and what that means is it can simultaneously, all at once, release all of its energy. It actually doesn't even require collisions. So we said most of the time chemical reactions require collisions. Here's an exception. This one just falls apart. And so that means it can release all of its energy very quickly, okay? So what we've seen here with the nature of reactants is that it can increase or decrease the reaction speed. And it's a little challenging to see exactly what it's gonna do in each case. So you should just be sort of familiar with the fact that the number of reactants matters and that the phase of reactants matter as well. Now let's go ahead and practice what we've learned. We're gonna do that with the example of rusting. Rusting is when we have the metal iron combined with oxygen and water to make this guy over here. Looks like a big scary formula. Just remember that's our rust. So we're forming rust. And over on the right, we see a picture of a bridge support that's rusted in the presence of oxygen and water. And so this really matters how quickly our metal rust determines how long we can use things like our bridges or locks that are made of iron, things like that. And in this question, we're going to circle the conditions that would make iron rust more quickly. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can guess, based on our discussion, which one of these would increase the rate of rusting. Okay, so the first question says iron in a low concentration of oxygen or iron in a high concentration of oxygen. And remember, we've learned that increasing the concentration of our reactants increases the rate. So here is where we would run that reaction more quickly. The second question asks iron at low temperatures or iron at high temperatures. Again, we've learned that high temperatures increase the rate of reaction, and so the high temperatures are going to rust more quickly. Now we start to get into some applications, thinking about circumstances that will change either temperature or concentration. Which will rust faster, iron during the winter or iron during the summer? Well, during the summer, we have higher temperatures. We also typically have higher humidity, that is more moisture in the air. So both the increased temperature and the increased concentration of oxygen are going to mean that iron rusts more quickly in the summer. Lastly, does iron in a humid climate rust more quickly or iron in a dry climate? Well, remember, humid means there's moisture in the air, and that is one of our reactants, the water way up here. And so what that means then is that when I have a more humid climate, I have more of that reactant around, more water around, and it's going to make it rust faster. All right, in this lesson, we've compared two fast chemical reactions to learn about reaction rates. We've introduced collision theory, and we've discussed factors that impact the reaction rate. Hey, hey.